This is a shitty crybaby. It sweeps too high, it's not true bypass, and to be honest, the effect is not that dramatic. It's like, I don't know, it's as if the Q factor on the bandpass filter was, was low. I don't know. So I gotta do something about it, but first let me show you how it sounds. Alright, so on the right, you got in variety GCB95 Crybaby, which happens to sound like shit. On the left, the exact same pedal, which used to sound like shit, until I made it more gooder by fixing everything that's wrong with this one. There's also these extra couple mods, but pay no mind to those, because they're not doing crap right now. So, special guest today. You hear that? That noise is coming from somewhere outside this house, and I have no idea what the hell it is, but it's been bugging me all day. And there's nothing I can do about it right now, so here's the last pull traditional on the neck through a Vox AC30. And here's the shitty cry baby using the neck pickup first. Rich pickup. You hear that? That's what this one bottoms out. That's a G. It's around 390 hertz. Now this one, same thing. Not so much, right? Let me go one fret higher. That's 400 and something. Might not seem like much, but that means the entire range of this one is way higher than this one, especially when we get to the top. Now, there's also the fact that, I mean, it's got a nice growl. Well, listen to this. That one screams. I mean, let's be honest. That's, this is way better. And there's also the fact that this one is not true bypass and this one is. So let's gut this thing and figure out what the hell is going on here. Okay, so, a couple things we can know right away from looking at this thing. It's a revision I. So that means it came with a red facial, 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 whatever the fuck you call it. The, the, the red inductor. And it might mean it's got the six contact thing. Yes, it does. It's got this switch, which is actually six contacts instead of three. Why do they wire it like this? Like a three point thing? Probably to justify charging you more for the classic one, but it's, it's the same switch. You just, we're gonna make a true bypass out of this and we got a red facial. And also good news, it seems like nobody fucked with this thing before. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat the iron and get this thing ready and see if we can. Number one, move this thing a couple teeth back so that the pot gets some extra range. So hopefully I can squeeze some more range from this you know, pot instead of having to twist this capacitor that's right here and move the sweep by modding the circuit. I don't wanna do that. I'll do it if I have to. And we're gonna have to modify this resistor to increase the Q factor to... This one goes in parallel with the coil and if you make it bigger, I don't know, Google vocal mode, it makes the, the, the peak of the resonant frequency, the whole thing goes higher. So I might move it from 33K to, I don't know, 68. And also I'm gonna wire this as a true bypass. Okay, so while the iron gets hot, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, loosen this thing a little bit. There we go, so that I can move this thing back. Let me see if I can, yes. So I will move it back and see if I can get 
a little bit more movement out of the pot. Oof, that's actually quite a lot. Now I'm gonna dial it back a little bit so that it doesn't stop because of the pot, but because of the uh, physical, you know, limit that you get on the hill. We want this to stop it and not the pot itself, because if the pot is stopping the motion every time you move it, you're gonna break the pot, okay? So we don't wanna do that. Gonna make sure that there's some extra range that you're not using. But that was quite a lot, and that explains why it was not going as, you know, as deep into the base territory as it should have. Okay, so the main problem that the owner was complaining about is gone. Now I just gotta make sure I stick this in the right place, and I can move on to the next thing. There you go. Okay, let me clarify a bit further what I just did. The pot on a wall is pretty much like any other, you know, single turn pot. You have a limited range of motion and operation of about 300 degrees, right? Now, on a wah, because you're hitting the limit on the heel and toe sides, your actual operating range is something more like this, right? Which is actually kind of good because it avoids you hitting this limit and laying your entire weight on the, on the pot and breaking it. But the sacrifice is you're losing some of the operating range, you know, electronically. Normally, this is what it would look like. You're sacrificing a bit at the top and at the bottom. Now, the problem with this one is you had your entire operating range and I was way close to the top and I had a lot of the bottom missing, which is what the owner of this pedal was complaining. So what I had to do is loosen this and dial it back quite a bit and do the same thing, but on the opposite side. I have my limits, I set it just before I break the pot and I sacrifice a lot at the top because, you know, I didn't need that part. So that's a compromise you gotta, you know, you're, you're able to choose on your own pedal. So know that. I mean, if your pedal is too treble or too bassy, you, you got this. Before you mess with the board, you can do this first. All right, so next thing I gotta do is remove the nut from the jacks so that I can take the board off of this thing. And modify the resistance that you know, determines how high or low the Q factor of the filter is gonna be. That's, as I said, what you can Google and find as the vocal mod. Okay, it just makes the effect more pronounced, which this thing kinda needs. Okay, that's another thing that needs a bit clarifying. The way a watt works is it acts as a band pass filter. You got your frequency here, and you got your amplitude here, all right? In between these two frequencies, everything gets amplified and anything outside that gets rejected, okay? Now, on a wah, when you move your pedal back and forth, what you do is shift those frequencies, okay? So the, the filter is not static, it goes back and forth. Now, there's another factor to consider here, which is actually what I modified now which is the Q factor, the quality factor of the filter. That means the relationship between this bandwidth here and the amplitude or how much the, the, the stuff that's in between these two lines gets amplified. Now that can be modified by changing that resistor, which you can find if you Google vocal mod. And this is gonna depend on the layout of your pedal, but it's a resistance that's in parallel with the coil. You got your default value, which was 33K on mine, and if you get a smaller resistor, the effect starts to get shallower. To the point that if you go too small, you get no wah effect. If you go higher, a higher value, you get a higher quality factor. You go too high and it gets annoying. Now, in this case, I went for a 68K resistance. That's supposed to say 68, that's supposed to say 33 which I'm confident is what the owner of this spell is, is, is after. I, I, I can change it again if I have to, but that, that's pretty much a standard step up that you do. Some people go up boards to, I don't know, 100K. Oh, that is just get quite annoying, but I think 68 is gonna be all right. So that's that. Now remove this screw here. And you can take out the whole thing. Here we go. Now, this is the resistance that we're gonna modify. I'm probably gonna speed this up because it's not really that interesting to watch. Okay. 
Okay, and I already went ahead and got myself a 68 kilo ohm resistance, which is gonna be in place of, it's gonna go in place of that 33K one. Little trick, if you don't want it to move, just open up the legs a little bit so that it stays there and it doesn't fall across the board again. Through the board, whatever. You know what I mean. Now that's done, snip the legs off. And I'm gonna keep one of these because I'm gonna use it for the, uh, for the switch. And now on to the most complicated part of this process, which is turning this thing into a true bypass switch. Now, let me first explain what I mean by that. The way this works as it is, is very rudimentary. It's a very ancient method, method of doing things. And I don't know why the hell they keep on doing that. But the thing is, I got the purple wire right here on the middle and it toggles between these two options, okay? The one on the middle is wired straight to the output jack. The blue one is the out of the effect the board and the green one is straight onto the input jack. So what am I doing here is I am telling to the output, okay, what am I sending you? Am I sending you the out of the effect, the effect signal, signal, holy shit, or am I sending you whatever comes in, the clean signal? And that's pretty much how it works. I'm deciding between two possible outputs. Now, what I'm not doing at any point is disengaging the board from the line because the this is wired straight to the jack, which is wired straight to the board. So at all times, whether this is on or off, I'm still loading the line. And that's what people refer to as tone sucking or treble sucking. I'm losing signal in the board, even if I'm not using it, which is what we're trying to correct. Luckily, I have this thing, which looks like three contacts, but it's actually six. So I don't have to use one of these. Good. And I'm not gonna go into detail on exactly how to do this. I'm just gonna plow through and link a, a decently written article that, you know, it's, it's, it's better, a better explanation than what I can provide mumbling right now. The only thing that I will mention is most articles omit that you gotta lift this capacitor to access the, to, to separate the, the circuit, which starts here on the input capacitor from the jack. Most people just, come to this piece of trace here on the board and cut it. Uh, I don't know, I don't want to do that. I, there's no need to do something that I cannot undo. I'm just gonna lift this thing and solder onto the capacitor straight, okay? Let's speed this up. <laughs> Okay, so now the circuit is separated from the jack. I'm still gonna use a cap, of course, but I'm gonna wire it right here and I'm gonna put a piece of wire that I've already cut and tinned, okay? Now this is gonna be going to the switch. I know it doesn't look pretty, but it's stable and it's at least it can be undone if I ever have to for whatever fucked up reason. See, told you, two completely independent contacts. This is how you peel a cable. You hold and pull. You don't bite, you don't cut, and you don't pull without holding. And this is why you always keep the legs of the resistors.
You see this? This is ground. This is all hooked to the sleeve of the jack. So this is ground. This is where I'm gonna have my new ground connection, okay? This one is over here. And I did a whoopsie. So what do we got here? New input. This comes from the cap. This green one still goes to the input jack. So when I engage this way, input jack goes into the board. Otherwise, if I engage this way, this is a ground connection, which I fucked up. I, I think it's gonna be visible during the speed up. This goes to ground, because we wanna ground any you, we don't want any potential to build up while this thing is not operating because you, you're gonna build up voltage and, or a charge and when you hook it up to the circuit you're gonna hear a pop. So this is grounded, the input of the circuit when you're not using it. On the other side we still have the same principle. Output jack is either connected to the out of the circuit when engaged on or it is connected to this which is jumped to the input jack. So now when you turn it off, it's completely bypassed. The signal reaches the input jack, it does not go into the board. Instead, it connects <clears throat> straight to this wire, which goes here to the out, okay? Once again, just in case, disengaged, turned this way from the jack, green wire, connected here now jumps straight here to the output jack which is connected to nothing else and it just comes in and out without going through the board. When it's turned on, you go to the jack, to the switch, jump to this green wire and to the board and when you come out of the board, you are connected to the output jack. That is what is called true bypass. And again, one important feature of this is that when not in use, the input of the circuit is connected straight to ground. So the voltage here is absolute zero, which means that the moment you turn it on, you're not gonna have a stored charge of any kind. You're not gonna hear a pop when you turn it on, which is also a plus. So yeah, let's put this thing together and see how it sounds. <laughs> Why did I wait until just now to do this? Let's see what we got. Not too bad, huh? Bridge! Holy shit, that scream! talking about earlier. Look at that. You hear that harmonic? That's the same one I get here. Now they both go as low. In fact, this one, whoops, this one was going so low I had to dial it back a little bit. I know the guy wants to go into bass territory, but that was just nuts. That was a bass wall. But besides, listen to this growl. Yeah, that's... I don't know, man. 
That's to me. That's what a crybaby is supposed to sound like. Say, yeah, that does it.